All right, you guys, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our first holiday ed edition of our live stream. I'm so excited. I'm happy to be brightening your week a little bit, I hope. Um, I know it does for me, so I'm hoping it does for you too. So today, it's so fun because today I'm going to turn the tables on you and we're going to have a little audience participation and uh, some Q&A. And then I'm going to start my demo today, and which is a snow, another snow scene. I know it's kind of similar to one that I did a couple of weeks ago, but I couldn't resist. And um, then we're going to do some gift giving, which I'm super excited about. And that, that's kind of it today. So no, no fluff, no other stuff, really just giving stuff away and having some fun. So that's, I'm really, really happy. Um, so let's see. But we do want to show a couple things in the studio. Should we show the Bob Ross? We have a new little mascot in the studio. <laughs> it's pretty pretty funny. Uh, so Bob Ross is, uh, uh, is sort of my, uh, uh, I don't know, I feel like I'm a, I have a little bit of Bob Ross in me. <laughs> so it's pretty, pretty fun. And um, yeah, so we're going to go from, from there into some Q&A. So you want to, should we go back to camera? Right here. Yeah, yeah camera two. Um, all right, so, uh, so many people uh, uh, filled out the survey to be eligible for the gift giving. That's really cool. We might get to some other kinds of stuff, but basically we just picked people off of this survey to do gift giving. And uh, But I thought it'd be fun today to do a little bit of Q&A and have you guys chime in to it. So. I'm going to start out with some questions for you guys, and uh, we'll, see, we'll see how this goes. Hopefully, it'll be fun for you. Um, all right. So first with some academic questions. So what are the three aspects of every color responsible for its appearance? So you guys can kind of chime in a little bit. And um, as you are chiming in on that, I can tell you a little bit about that. I have my palette set up <coughs> to... Looks, uh, really quick, Marla. Okay. Allison uh, chimed in first. Wait, wait, maybe. Um, okay. The questions are coming in really fast. Okay. Allison was the first one, I okay. think, okay. with uh, hue, saturation, and value. That is correct. Good job, Allison. That is right. And... So I have my, my tray set up to conform to those three aspects of color. So hue, is it, is it blue, is it yellow, is it red? That's the simple one. Value, and also referred technically as luminescence, but let's just say, say how light or, or dark a color is. So how light or dark. So um, high key being light, low key being dark another way it's a little more to me it's that's a little confusing but and then saturation how bright or dull a color is so in terms of saturation the saturated ones kind of sort of fall like like this depending on the hue right and then I have a section over here in my palette that is all neutrals because I use these a lot so that's that's right Okay, next question. This one's a little harder. What are the four influences of aerial perspective? And quite a few of my, the monthly lessons, we focus on how to create that, um, the, the illusion of aerial perspective in a painting. That's something that we want to be able to tap into, especially as landscape painters. So there are four main influences. So I'll just kind of wait for somebody to answer. Okay. <laughs> it's a little tricky. Let's see. Susan okay. says sky, ground plane, uprights, and slanted planes. That's Carlson's theory of angles. How about Tim says temperature, humidity, and distance? Mm. Margaret, yeah, yeah. value, light, and dark? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bonnie, distance, light, subject, value? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
How about distant, cooler foreground, warmer? Mm, that's close. How about vertical, horizontal depth, Sherry? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, no. Uh, that's not what I had in mind. I mean, all those things are like kind of swimming in there. Cause... How about Ursula says, bluing, size, muting, and lightness? Okay. Size, depth, aerial perspective, not linear. Linear perspective would refer to something get diminishing in scale as it goes back. I'm talking about aerial perspective only. So then we have Jan, she says decreased value, loose edges, grade colors, and size. Size, no, because that's again the, the linear perspective. Okay, here's what I had in mind. And you know, this is just my answer, not, not necessarily a definitive answer. But as something recedes towards the horizon, the effect of aerial perspective makes it lighter lighter in value. It makes it cooler. It makes it duller and it makes it softer. So those four things are really important when we're painting because if, if you want that effect and what I'm doing a lot of times when I'm painting is I'm exaggerating that effect even in a, in a reference photo. I'll probably even do that today. If something, my reference photo today, um, it's a really um, clear day where there isn't, there aren't a lot of particles in the air to create that illusion of aerial perspective. So likely, I'm going to exaggerate some of these uh, influences to to create more illusion of space. Okay, so that's that. Okay, this is an easier question. <laughs> I promise. What are your favorite pastels, Marla? I wonder what the answer to that is going to be. Let's see. <laughs> There's a tiny bit of a uh, delay. Yeah, so we'll we, we have to wait for the delay. We need to get the Jeopardy music. Yeah. Yeah. We we have some votes for Terry Ludwig's. Okay. Um, all of them, which is a pretty good vote. <laughs> that's um, a good. Blue spruce. Very good. Blue vote. spruce. Yep, that's um, on there. All of them. Schmenke's. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, probably the correct answer is you don't have a favorite brand. Oh, I don't have a favorite brand, but I. What about my my specific pastels that I can name? How about that? Uh, Blue spruce. Blue spruce. Um, Unison. Okay, they're going for eggplant. Terry Ludwig. Yeah. That's probably the one. Yeah. And um, there's one more. There's mm -hmm. one more in all of these. That in all this whole tray, there's probably only three that I can name specifically. Yellow what, 13. That's it. <laughs> that's it. Great. Oops, my, my mic thing is coming off. Okay, next question. What is, what is the one principle of composition that you should keep in mind? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> we have a couple uh, okay. rolling in here. Okay. Rule of thirds. Yeah, that's a good one. Definitely. How about balance? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Golden mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Focal point? Yeah. Uh, no equal, try to avoid equal sizes? That's right. Never have two intervals the same. That's, to me, if you have that, just that one, you're probably good to go. No two sizes equal is what David said. Yeah. Which is no. Yeah. No. No interval. No shape. No nothing. This. This. The same. 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 So you want unequal division of sizes, shapes, color, all of that. Okay. Now here's the big mystery question that everybody wants to know that I'm still probably not going to really truly answer. What music do you listen to, Marla? <laughs> oh boy. Dun, 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 dun. I want to hear. I want to hear what everyone thinks it is. <laughs> we have a uh, vote for like 1970s music. Okay. Um, Cuban jazz, mm -hmm. disco, mm -hmm. Beach Boys, the Stones, mm -hmm. glam rock, mm 
Mm. New Age music. It's not a bad guess. Uh-huh. No, um, I don't know. I don't really... 80s soft rock. Uh-huh. Uh, Metallica? No. 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 Um, let's no. see. Classic rock? Mm, kind of. Maybe. Motown? Motown, yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to give you like a little hint. Think Rainbow Connection and probably some disco. So there's that. But um, really, the, the, the really true answer is it's very eclectic. And it's I'm just like uh, liking all the brands of pastels, I like all the genres of music. So you just never know what you're going to get. Okay, so that's probably the most correct answer. Okay, now a little bit more serious. Who first employed optical mixing? Or who were, who were the sort of innovators of that? Dun, dun, dun. This is fun. <laughs> I have a guess on, or an answer on Monet. Monet, yeah, the, the Impressionists. That, that's right. Pizarro, and, Seurat, yeah. the Impressionists. The Impressionists. They were the, they were the biggies. Okay, next, a little bit more uh, s sort of functional technical. Why should you take the wrappers off your pastels? I know, it's, it's tricky because... Once you do, it, they look like this, and you don't know what's what unless you're super, super familiar. Like I know this one is a Mount Vision. Just based on its, its size and thickness, you know, the, these are easy. These are new pastels, so I know that. Um, so uh, Rhonda chimed in first with, I think, the right answer. Uh -huh. uh, so you can use the side. Yes, yeah, so you can use the side. You can use the whole thing. You can use the end. You can use the side. You can do a, just a huge variety of different kinds of marks. This becomes, it's not just like one kind of brush. It's, so I have all of these brushes in my studio, but this can do so many of the things that like 10, 15 brushes can do if you just practice with it. So that's, that's why you, you really want to take those wrappers off because if you leave them on, you can't, you can't take the most advantage of the sticks. Okay. All right, another question. This is another one that's a little tricky. What's the benefit or reason for doing an underpainting? Or benefits, I should, or reasons, I should say, because there, there are several. Dun, 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 dun. I'm having fun. I don't know about anybody else. So we have a, um, okay. Ms. Tigerbaum says to give tone to the paper, um, yep. vibrancy, a roadmap mm -hmm. to value, um, to yep. cover the white of the yep. paper. Yep. Um, All true. Speed, speed inspiration, no white left. Yeah. Um, just straight up, just color. Yeah. Uh, to save pastels. That's yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. um, harmony. Yep. Um, and let's see, um, to get better harmony in the painting, cover the paper, add depth, setting yeah. the values. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Yes. I wrote to prom promote color harmony, establish the foundation of a complex scene, create a spontaneous starting point, have several starts in progress. Because typically what I do is I'll, I'll do a bunch of underpaintings and have them sitting around in the studio so that when I come into the studio fresh, I've already got a start. I'm not starting with that kind of dreaded blank page. Uh, and all the, all the answers were, you know, to me, um, you know, correct. There's no really correct answer to that. But yeah, feeling, feeling, getting kind of rid of the white, having this kind of spontaneous color story to play with. So all that's, all that's good. Okay, next question. Should you rely on sets of pastels to make your color choices? <laughs> what do you think I would say about that? 
get a lot of no, 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 no. Um, yeah. I say no because every scene is influenced by the prevailing light and every color is influenced by what's adjacent to another color. So relying on those sets is not super helpful. They might give you a sort of a starting point, but I wouldn't rely on them such that, oh, I'm going to do a sunset landscape or, oh, I'm going to do a portrait and here's my portrait set and I'm just going to use just those sets. You could populate your, your, your box kind of with them, but I wouldn't rely on them solely to make the choices because I think that that takes away that the, the real um, nurturing, really nurturing the sensitivity to um, color. And that's what I really want you guys to do is to like nurture your own way of seeing color and your own choices and your own, um, you know, to me, I'm looking at my scenes as I'm developing it and going, okay, what's it hungry for? And a lot of that's my own uh, understanding of color theory, but also my own personal aesthetic and uh, sensitivity to color. So nurturing that, I think, the way to go. Okay, next question. How do you start a piece? Do you have a method or rules? That's another trick question. Waiting for the answers to roll in here. No rules. No rules. No method. Just start. No rules. Break the rules. We have a thumbnail sketch, which actually is not a bad yep. uh, thing to do. Um, thumbnails are great. Um, yeah. Value block in. Uh, start with a drawing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Get some paint down. A noton sketch, which is always good. Noton. Yeah. Um, there's lots of ways to start. There are lots of ways to start. Uh, now, photo, thumbnail. Yeah. Okay, here's what I have written down. No, I don't have a set method, formula, or technique. Okay, that being said, I do have a sort of process that I rely upon. And what I try to do is to figure out the simplest way to achieve the result that I think that I'm after, you know, I'm visualizing, okay, what, what do I want? What am I attracted to about this particular subject? Even if it's abstract, what, what, what am I going for? And then within that, I'm trying to, to figure out um, how, how to go about that and do it in the simplest, easiest way. So sometimes that's to create an underpainting that helps me build a foundation. Sometimes I need to do a thumbnail. Sometimes I can dive right in and just start off, but how in, in every case, it's just trying to strategize what is the simplest, easiest way to get to that, to that end that I'm visualizing. And because if it's not, if it feels too hard, I just back off and I just don't do it. So I'm, I'm that's what I'm navigating is, you know, what's, what's the easiest way to get there? Okay, next question. This is a really popular question. Hey, Kevin, you're going to hate this. Is Kevin your husband? <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out. Let's find out what people uh, think. Uh, <laughs> Kevin's blushing. Oh, I always do. Yeah, yeah I'm blushing. The answer is no. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. No. Yep, exactly. No. Kevin's not my husband. Nope. And one answer is you do not have one of those. I do not have one of those. That's correct. I do not. I'm not married. Another, um, an another answer is wannabe. I know. I, no, I no, man. no, no. So he's happily married. He has a lovely, delightful wife who I know he's absolutely dedicated to. And I will be, um, um, I will be on camera eventually. Eventually. Yeah. He's a little shy. I'm camera shy. Yeah. People, yeah. But Kevin's been working for me, what, about three years three now? Three years, yep. Holy moly, it's gone by fast. And um, I really value his contribution and work ethic and loyalty to the business. And he's 
fun, fun to work with. So, all good. Um, now, what? Just a couple more, and then we'll get into the demo. What is your favorite art book, Marla? Well, <laughs> What's my well, favorite here's art book? a quick book? question here. It says, yeah. Does Kevin paint? And the answer is yes. Yes, he does. He's I an know. artist yeah. as well as a creative director, editor extraordinaire. Let's see. Yep. The answer for your book, the book question mm -hmm. is the one that your mom got you, but your mom's got you lots of books. My mom's got me lots and lots of books. My mom actually did not get me this this one. No. But I'm, she's gotten me hmm. several more by the same author. Donna and Peggy and a few others have chimed in with creative illustration. That's right. They are paying attention. They're so good. Here's my copy. My copy does not have the dust jacket because my copy was given to me when I was about, I don't know, like eight. I'm, I might have been like eight or nine years old. There's my, I'm, I'm not going to hold it. There's my maiden name. <laughs> and anybody, that's it. Um, this was given to me by an art teacher when I was really young. This is an amazing book. You can actually get this book. Um, as a free PDF online, it's so it's so great. It's just chocked full of just incredible stuff, and um, he has written m many um, other art art instructional books, and I have every single one. And my mom got me those, um, and they're every single one is just so amazing, so, so incredible. So that's it. Um, oh, I have oh, one more question. One more question. This is an important one. What online workshops do you think that we have planned for next year? That's a great question. Yeah, that's a good question. Because we have, we have a lot planned. We have, we're ambitious. We're very ambitious. So Maria says sunsets, which is true. Sunsets is true. Um, these are coming in fast. It's coming, that's coming. More acrylics. You, you hope. Uh, plain air. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Plain air is tough to do because of the filming. Portraits. Mm, maybe. Possible. Uh, more acrylics. People want more acrylics. Good. Um, they want more yeah. watercolors. It looks like. Yeah, I want to do that too. Um, we. Maybe the figure. Oh, that's tough. We'll see. Figure painting. More likely, more likely portraits before figures. Color College 2. Yes. Okay, here's what I have written down. This is not an exhaustive list. We have a new pastel workshop coming soon. We're, we're working on a drawing course, which we think is really important and foundational to everything. Color College 2. And of course, we're working on monthly pastel painting lessons online, and we're kind of full full bore into that right now. And it's pretty. We have some pretty exciting stuff for next year already in the can, so that's really fun. I would love to do more watercolor. I would love to do fairy gardens <laughs> in watercolor. Um, what else would I love to do? Oh, we have a lot of stuff that we more acrylic for sure. So we'll see, we'll see how much we can get accomplished. Well, here's an interesting yeah. idea. Composition College. Composition College. That's a pretty good idea. It's a good idea. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's it for questions. That was fun. And um, we are, we, um, Donna Berkeley, my Facebook um, admin helper, she's amazing. Um, she helps admin a lot of the Facebook groups. She put together a really, really intense um, FAQ um, list, and we're going to be posting that so that um, you can click on the link to that, and you'll have a lot of answers to the frequently asked questions that come up in the, in the stream. So that will be really good. That will be a good addition. Okay, so today I'm going to paint this snow scene. And speaking of composition, I do think... I think it's pretty, it's, well, obviously it's pretty, it's, it's amazing. It's another one of those um, photos that I took when I was in the Canadian Rockies. Um, I do think that there are a few things um, 
about it that need some tweaking just compositionally. For one thing, in my photo, the horizon is not perpendicular to the picture plane. I feel like um, there are some things that, well, we'll talk about it when we get up on the board. I think that'll be easier. Um, do you want to hold it up on the board now? Just yeah, to... yeah, yeah. Let me do that. Um, let me just get a little piece of tape. I'll put it over here. Um, and then I got to, I got to put my hair up. I think my hat is going to be in the way, so I'm going to take it off. Okay. So a couple of little things. So I want to make sure that this horizon is perpendicular to the picture plane. I'm going to fix that. I'm going to make it a square. Um, so I think I'm going to get. I don't need this tree that's kind of halfway in. Um, I don't think it's really strengthening the composition. Uh, so I think I'll make a square. I do like this shadow shape in the foreground. It's kind of framing the the whole piece. But one thing about it is I want to make sure that I'm suggesting some other um, layers of this shadow. So in other words, I, I don't want this to be the only uh, shadow in, in the piece. I think that the these peaks, this this shape, though it is distinctive to this mountain, I think it's a little odd. And if I were to change the composition and cut it here, you see how it dives down, um, and it would, I think, in an odd way. So I think I'm just going to let that mountain kind of run off. Um, these trees are also about the same, you know, this, this one runs off. The danger to me would be having this guy tangent to the um, edge of the picture plane. So I'll have to decide whether I want them both to run off or that I want them both to stay in the composition. So that will be a choice that I'll make. I do like these grasses that are in, in sort of shadow and silhouetted back here. I think that that kind of is an interesting aspect of this. I like that. Um, I think this area is a little dark, but we'll see. It might work. I don't want the scene to have an overall too somber feel, which it could if I get too many darks. So I'll, I'll see how that goes. So that's that's what I'm thinking about the scene. Um, in something like this, I might, in fact, do a little thumbnail um, to kind of work out those kind of aspects. But I think I can, I think I can manage without today. And that's that's it. So I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna put my hair up, so not in your guys's way, and um, we'll get started. We're gonna do our 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 giveaway mid midway through the painting. When I take a little break, which will be super fun. I'm really happy. Can we go to the camera, other camera for just a sec? I just want to say before I start painting um, that I just really thank everybody for sticking with us through this year when we were really ramping up on doing the live streams. We had to dial in the color. We had to dial in the audio. We're, you know, we're still work, always working to improve. But I really appreciate that everybody kind of stuck with us through all our little technical um, issues. Um, I so appreciate my my team, Kevin, Bryce, Roger, um, Ralph, all the support people. That well, we don't have a lot, but we have we have some. I appreciate everybody on our on our team. My mom for making sure I had all the books that I needed and wanted. So, um, and all of you guys are so, so great. So I truly appreciate it. And so I, I'm happy to be um, doing some giving to um, show my appreciation. Okay. Um, get going here. Get all this out of the way so I can see and you guys can see. All right. Okay. All right. Back to back to the real world. Back to painting. 
sometimes you guys say something like, oh, this takes me out of my, you know, the real, the, the world and gives you a little break. But to me, this is the real world. This, this thing right here that I'm making, this is it. All right. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to think about, again, this division of space thing that we just talked about. Like, I want unequal. I don't want, if I come in here, this is going to be equal. I don't want that. I want the horizon a little higher. So thinking about this horizon uh, back, back here of the lake, I think something like this. I want to make sure it's perpendicular. And I could even just... Make sure I get it kind of straight, right? My trees, just kind of mop them in here a little bit. I like the angle of them. One is forward of the other. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And this area right here in the painting, I think, is going to be important. It's kind of right dead center, but I think that it'll work out um, regardless. Now, right in my scene, here are the distant trees, those little ones. And then this gets larger over here. I want to be careful about that because I want this intersection right there gets to be kind of important. So I'll think about what that's going to be. Also, there's this little dip here in the tree line. I don't think I'm going to include that because that may look funny. So in other words, I'm taking the reference photo and I'm using it, but I'm not married to it. Now, it, it's one thing if you're painting like a, a particular scene, a particular place, and you're wanting to sort of, um, what's the right word? You're documenting it to a degree, or you, 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 you're doing a commission, say, and that person wants you to paint a certain, say it's a national park that's got a certain, you know, iconic um, uh, scene in it. That's a different thing. I'm not doing that. I'm just trying to make a good painting from this reference. So I feel free to scoochy things around, eliminate things um, at will to make my painting stronger. And I'm not necessarily concerned with th this mountain looking like it does in this photo. And here's this little clump of cluster of grass back here. And so here's this mountain back here. See, I'm, I'm going to come up with some kind of shape like so. And then I'm going to come up with some idea here. I still want that sort of craggly I think that that's pretty good. So I might want a little more sky so I don't get that. So I'm, I'm looking at this, this space right here. I don't, want, I don't want the tip of my tree, the, the tallest one, to be too close to the edge, tangent. I don't want that. 
All right. So really quick, Marla, mm -hmm. can you remind us what exact size that is? No. Okay. I don't know. This, I don't know what exactly. Going over your um your rule to get it into the shipping box. Oh, that's a good question. I think it might be. It might be. It doesn't matter if it if it's a little larger. No, it's it will go in there. What is it? Uh, twelve by twelve. Twelve by twelve. Okay. It'll fit in there. All right. I think that's pretty good as ter in terms of a sketch. And now, just again, I'm how just in terms of an approach, I want to get this the whole thing rolling as quickly as I can. So, what's the to me in this particular case? What is the easiest thing to start with? Now that's not necessarily the biggest thing, but what what strikes me as the easiest thing for me to start with to get me into this. And interestingly enough, it feels like it's this um, kind of grassy vegetation right here in the center because I feel like that color is really accessible to me. I sort of know what I would want that to be. And it's this kind of soft brown at least to start. And I can use that over here. Also, just to remind everyone, you are using pastel matte. This is pastel matte, yeah. Let me get that in there a little bit, just to start out. And then I'm going to use this down here. Just gives me a, I just need to get in, right? I have to, you have to start somewhere. So, you know, what is that going to be? Now, um, I'm thinking about this shadow shape and I'm looking at the color. Now you could come right along here and go, what color is that? And the thing that pokes out to me right now is something like this. Um, so that's where I'll start, just because, again, you know, just starting with the local color that I see, like that looks on here, it looks a little much, it might be, but I'll, I'll, I'll give it a, you know, a start, I'll give it a go. And just drag this in here. I'm thinking about the the snow. So th these are cast shadows from other trees and I'm thinking about what what they're they're conforming to the the topography this the snow. I'm putting them in really thin putting the this shadow in really thin knowing that I'm going to want to come over this with some other color. I'm going to want to get my grasses in over the top. So that's not bad. Now I wanted to make sure that I had some other indication of these cast shadows. So I'm going to go ahead and get a little stronger with some of those back in here. And then here, there's a edge of a bank that is in shadow, and that's that's not a bad. I'm just going to continue it, even though it doesn't really do that, like that. So that's good. Now, I'm looking at my distant mountain back here. And it's kind of close to this. It might be just a little bit lighter in value. Let's see. That's just a tiny bit lighter and a little bit duller. And I think that's good. And I'm, so I'm going to come in. So, you know, really I'm just analyzing, you know, what's, what's easiest for me to start with. Here's a quick question. Mm -hmm. 
Is it a good rule of thumb to start with a brighter shade knowing you can tone it down later? Yeah, I, I, I tend to do that. Um, I'm going to go for something a little more saturated on the whole, knowing that it's, it is pretty, it's, to me it's easier, in my estimation, it's easier to settle something down than to get back if you're wanting to sort of get back the, the intensity. Okay, so now I want a darker blue back in here. Uh, it's a little greener. It'd be fun if it was just a little greener. This. That's kind of nice. not bad. Okay, so now I think it would be, oh, I see. I want to, I missed this. I want that a little more. Um, I want, I'm thinking about the snow now, the white, or I, I, I'm sure I just got pastel all over my face, did I? Uh, it doesn't <laughs> look that bad. I don't <laughs> think so. Okay. I'm usually pretty clean. Okay, um, I'm thinking I want something not white, white. I'm, I want it to be warmer, though. So I'm heading on in this direction. The pink might not be bad. This, something like this. Let me see. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this just because. And I'm just getting myself set up so that I have, so I really can see the, the value relationships that I've got going. So there's um, a little talk on the um, chat about the, um, the donation, the super chat donation yeah. uh, option. And it's really great, and we appreciate that people do that. It's really yeah, great. we really do appreciate, yeah. And Especially if you're, if you're not able to get to the website and you don't, or you... Maybe not even interested in online lessons, though I think you should be. Um, <laughs> it's a way to support doing the live streams, continuing. And there's one streaming. comment uh, that the, the the donation button doesn't seem to work from abroad, but um, going to pastel paintings, uh, pastel painting with Marla, and buying products does work from abroad. Yeah, so <laughs> yes, it a, does. That's one good part about that. Yeah. Yeah, we really appreciate it. I don't know. Yeah, we really do. Um, I the super chat you have to be. I I think you have to be signed in, right, Kevin? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So. Now and really quick, what you're using right now? That's a yellowish terry. Yeah, blue. it's it's a. Uh, I'm not sure. I think it might be a un, unison. And it has a yellow tint. Yeah, it has. It's yellowish. And that's. This is fun. Okay, I'm thinking. Yeah. It's nice.
So that really gets that, those layers back here. And again, so this isn't really shown in the photograph, this light coming through this, this brush, but I know that that's going to look cool. <laughs> so I'm putting it in. Good. Here's a quick question. Um, for an underpainting, can I use clear liquid acrylic and tint it with acrylic color, C tint it with an acrylic color, or will it take up too much of the tooth of the paper? Just trying to be economical. So if she was using um, clear liquid acrylic and then coloring it with a little acrylic paint. It depends on what the clear, are you talking about clear gesso or matte medium or? We will find out. It depends. And, it, and you do have a little pastel on your face, by the way, sorry. <laughs> I'm Didn't not. See it that yeah, last I'm time. not surprised. Okay. Um, it depends on what it is, actually. All right. Now I'm going to get over here to my trees. I don't want them too dark. Um, so I'm going to try to keep it a little. I, I do need some some more darks on these, but I'm. Here's another question. Mm -hmm. How does that bright yellowish tone fit with what you were saying about the aerial perspective in the far distance? The seems bright like, yellowish tone? Yes. It seems like you'd want something that was a little different for the This? Oh, back here? Yeah. Oh, so, you know, the whole thing with the aerial perspective is those, those ideas, um, Carlson's theory of angles, aerial perspective, those, those are things that I let swim around up there, like, oh, I want to push the, the perspective back because I, because I think that's going to make my painting better. It's something that I keep in mind. That doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to do everything to that way. Yeah, does that make sense? I'm, I'm, I let those those things influence my choices, but they're, they're not, they're, if, if I did it exactly like that, then I would wind up with paintings that looked exactly like my photos. And I don't, you know, or, you know, look mostly realistic. I'm not after that. I'm after the best painting. So yeah, like, oh yeah, like if you want, if you want the effect of aerial perspective to be really more pronounced, this is how you do it. Um, and that's what I'm thinking. So, yeah, that's if what I just said um, might not apply to that. However, snow is a little bit different because of, uh, because of the way it's interacting with the light. But, but it is a good question because I think, you know, um, I think I, I see my students a lot of times getting too too like bound to what um, they think they ought to be doing in a painting. And it's, you know, it's, for me, it's not that, it's not that at all. So um, just going back to the chat, there's a, there is a, apparently there is a fluid liquid acrylic medium out there. Which oh, I'm, I'm not terribly yeah, yeah, with. yeah. Yeah, that, something like that would be great. You probably would be able to yeah, it, tint that with acrylic yeah, ink. Yeah, you, you could probably tint it with just about anything. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So I'm just getting a, a little bit more color, a little bit more of these darks. I'm just playing with the marks a little bit. I'm not, I'm not sure about it yet. I, I feel like these, the lights are maybe a little too light. I'll, I'll, I'll play with it. I'm going to come back around to it.
but you kind of got you kind of have to get enough going to really see the whole thing working and I, I don't quite yet okay I'm going to get some more color in for these guys some directional light going this cluster of trees these two guys here it's got more of a shadow side over here maybe maybe it's time for some Terry Ludwig's some darks where's the one that I wanted I cleaned one this morning that I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to want that. This one. No, that's not it. Is that it? Yeah, this one is it. So I'm just kind of dragging on a little bit of this color, maybe even down here. Here's an interesting question. Um, when is it okay to have an angled horizontal line? Um, on the horizon? Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, an angled horizon. Um, if you're if you're going for something other than realism, you know, if, uh, a, a, a perpendicular horizon is al almost any time going to give you the figure ground, and it's going to say, "I'm a landscape." When you deviate from that, it's going to Say I might not be a landscape. Yeah, it's sometimes called a Dutch angle in uh, in film. Oh, makes, is it? Yeah, it oh. makes it a little bit used in like horror movies and suspense. Yeah, and yeah, right. Kind of creates a sense of things being a little bit off. Off, yeah, or or not not real. Terry Gilliam uses a lot of Dutch angles in his movies. There, there's um, some, you know, abstract painting that has that too. And you know, I, what I think is that it's fine. It's all those, all those things. It's fine to break the rules. However, in my view. It's good to know when you're doing it, because <laughs> um, if you're if it's just like r random, um, then it can come across like uh, amateurish or that 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 it was unintended. Like, oh, that's a mistake. You know, I'm trying to usually av avoid that kind of situation. I'm just getting a little bit of light on the side of this. Oh, this is fun. Okay, now I think I want to get the sky in because then the sky is going to tell me a little bit, give me a little more information. Um, I want a little gradation in the sky. Um, it's So now here's an instance where I'm going to be um, changing up the color um, to help me a little bit. So at the horizon right here, it's quite... So if you look at this photo right here, so the sun's over here, 
Um, it's late afternoon, and the sun is setting over here. Um, it's darker over here, and so there's this gradation that's not only top to bottom, but um, from left to right. That is kind of cool to get, so I think I'm going to try to get that. So I'm going to start with something. Um, I see this is warmer, so I'm going to start with something like this over here. And let it, so I'm going to let off a little bit, let up a little bit. So it's a little bit lighter, and then I'm going to come in with some blue here. But it's not, um, it's still pretty light in value, and lighter than is sort of indicated in the photo, really. because I want more contrast. And I can see already that that's pretty good. I want to change the contour of that. One thing that I do see already is that maybe this is a little dark. And that's good information. And it's good, good for me to get that sky in early. And then I'm going to come around to my trees. I want a little bit more aqua in, in the sky. I want a different kind of mix. But I'm going to have to do this kind of gingerly around my pines. And knit that light around them. Just take my time. Something like that. Keep working it. I need to get these to kind of go together. I know you don't really keep track, but mm -hmm. is that yellow on the horizon? right up behind the mountains there. Um, is that the same yellow as in the foreground on the snow? Do you know? It, it isn't, but it's really close. I guess I just didn't even realize I, you know, I, I didn't, I could have used the same one. Okay, that's coming together nice. I like it. I do think that that needs to go a little lighter now, and that's really good information. Let's there's, see. There's an interesting question. I don't want to distract you too much today, mm -hmm. but um, this one, I think this is a very fascinating question. Do okay. you remember the very first pastel you ever painted? Well, that depends on... Um, are you talking about... I don't know, back in the day or maybe in art school or... When, when did you get, when did you oh. get like, hip to painting in pastel? Like, like actually painting... Like I've done pastel since I was a little girl. I used to do animals in um, Conti, um, Carbothello pencil and Conti pencil. That was my big thing when I was a little girl. So um, I've done them since then. But then 
in college, actually, I had an independent study class that I, um, I did. Um, I studied, in particular, Degas, and so I did um, pastels for that. And then when I, um, so my, um, when I was married, I, I have two sons, and one of them was born super, super, super premature. And he, um, and so for a number of years, and he's fine now, he's like 30. <laughs> and um, but back, back then, that was a big thing, and he was in the hospital a long time, and I couldn't work for a long time. And I, so when I started painting again, when I started doing illustration again and painting again, I wanted to do something that was a little fun for me um, as well, I, you know, just to kind of get myself back into the mode of painting. And, and so I started doing, that's when I really started doing pastel landscapes, when I, after um, I started back to work, after Kevin was born. Yeah, my son, I have, my son is, one of my sons is named Kevin. So, so here's a, an interesting question. When you reach for, uh, I think they're all interesting questions, by the mm -hmm. way, but um, when you reach for a pastel, does it matter if the palette goes from light to dark or dark to light, as in the values? So you have your values, the lightest ones are facing you and the darkest ones are farther from you. Does that matter? Is that just a preference thing or do you feel like Oh, that? you mean setting it up opposite land than yeah. this? Yes. Oh, um, I don't think that it really matters, but I have to say that I, what I'm trying to do is, um, I, on the whole, I, I don't want my paintings to be too dark. So if they were right here, I think it would be temp more tempting. So I think that, that just the physical proximity to them closer might not be so good. Um, but that's just, that's me. I've seen other pastelists have it the other way. Um, also, those weeds that are in the foreground there, are they purple or is that, the, is that the color of the page? Here? Yes. It is a sort of purpley color. It's, it's a little mauve-y purpley. Don't you think that's great? I love it. <laughs> I see them that way. In the, in the, I definitely see that, that way, in the reference. How are we doing on time? Oh my gosh. Yeah, we're already over an hour. Okay, we gotta, I gotta speed up. But the thing is that um, I don't want it too much because um, we're doing the giveaway. I'll, I'll do that right now, and we'll, we'll take a break here. But the thing is that um, we're giving away this painting today. So I don't want to, you know, I, I want to do it justice, okay? So um, that's one thing here. Okay, so let's do some giveaway stuff for right now. Let's switch to the other camera. Because I have a list. So um, you guys uh, filled out the survey, um, the, you guys that filled out the survey, and um, I really appreciate it. So it's really nice. That way you're going to get what you want, and that's super great. So today we're going to give away we're going to give away gifts every um, live stream that we do. We're going to do two more live streams next week, and we'll be doing similar giveaways. So that's really super, super nice. Um, I feel like I have, do I have pastel all over me? No, I think you're fine. <laughs> I, think it's good. I feel like I do today. It doesn't matter. Okay, so the first of all, we're going to give away uh, pastels, Terry Ludwig pastels, a little little sweet little box of, I think there's six in it. Um, and the first one goes to Magdalena Newman. So if she's watching, you don't have to be watching, but um, we, we are going to need addresses. 
So that's going to be important. So because we're going to have to send you physical stuff, right? Next, Claudia Needham and Sherry Thompson. So you guys are going to get some pastels. The demo painting today is going to go to Susan Peltonen. Peltonen. I'm sorry if I messed up your name, Susan, but we'll get that to you. Make sure you, you, that we have your addresses. And, and um, um, just send the addresses via the survey. Yes, yeah. yes, to um, support at um, paintinglessonswithmarla.com. And the, um, there's another painting that's being given away today. Oh, I should have, I, I left it in the other space. Um, it's going to Shelley Goldman. And so the painting that I picked, it's actually from the little um, grouping of paintings that I did several months back when I was just in the studio playing around. And it's actually a piece that I really love. And I am not giving away just stuff, you know, from the bottom of the drawer, giving away some nice, nice pieces that I um, think that you'll appreciate. And all right, next we're going to be giving away free a uh, free workshop of your choice and that goes to Susan Graham. Oh hey Marla really quick mm -hmm. um Susan Pelotonin I think uh -huh. is, it, is that how I think Yeah. It's right. Um she is she is watching today and she says oh, oh, my, oh my god thank you. Oh yeah, great. Yeah, god. you're going to get this Susan. Yay. So I'm going to try to do a good job. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, it's fun. It's so fun. It's really fun to give stuff away. So um Great, I'm so glad you're watching. So a free workshop goes to Susan Graham, Helen Stevenson, and Chris McCall. All three of you guys get a free workshop of your choice. And finally, today, this is pretty exciting because this is our, our big flagship product that we're super proud of and is the um, best, um, the, the, the biggest prize of the day is one free yearly membership. So one, one year free, and that's 20, 25 um, sessions and hundreds of hours of video and the super streams and the mileage training and the whole nine yards. And that goes to Deidre Gibson. So that's it for today on gifts. So it's really super fun to give stuff away. Love it. Love, 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 love it. All right. So if you got a physical thingy, make sure we have your address. All right. So, all right, let's get back at this painting. We'll finish this up or, and if I don't finish it totally on camera today, because I, I don't want to take, you know, too, too much time, I'll make sure that I will finish it and, and get, get it off. All right. That was really exciting. It was yeah. exciting. <laughs> really happy for everyone who won. It was great. I know. It is better to give than to receive. Okay, now I'm going to mix in some of this other blue into my foreground shadow shape because there is this sort of sense that there's a you know kind of dappled light in here it's really nice Bryce how's everything looking today How you doing good We're going to get this, this streaming thing. <laughs> I get it down one way or another. So 
So that's nice. And um, I'm now that I've got that done, I now I feel like it's too spotty, so I'm going to just come in and kind of um, use this other stick to sort of blend and meld the 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 two hues together just a little bit. It's not quite so. Now the same thing can be said about the the. The light, I want to add another color in here. So this is a kind of a pink, a little bit of a pink tone. Now, oh, really quick, one yes. quick question just mm -hmm. came in. Do you ever use Blick pastels? Um, I have not tried. You know, I have some that I need to that uh, that I'm gonna try. I, I need to do like a little um, review video of them, and I they're sitting over there in my cabinet, and I just haven't gotten to it. Um, I did sort of sit down with them one day and sort of just fiddle around with them a little, and um, you know, I have I have, can't say I I did a painting with them, um, but I, I I didn't I didn't think it was awful, um, which was good because you know I want students to have some uh, options that aren't you know quite as pricey you know. Um, so now I'm just kind of getting some of this this other color in here because I want to warm up the whole thing just a little. And I like that. I'm I'm a little skeptical of of um, the of a pastel that's you know made from a place like Blix, um, but you know gotta gotta give it a try. Yeah, so that's starting to kind of come together a little bit. I guess I bought, just bit off a little bit more than I could chew for today. I didn't think so, but.
And um, how do you get the paper off the new pastels? Some people seem to think it's a little difficult. Do you just tear it off? Um, yeah, I, that, you know, sometimes I will use a, a little exacto blade just to go in there and kind of split it off. Okay, I'm, I, I like this painting. I'm going to go ahead and get the snow on the mountains and um, see where I'm at. And you typically sign your paintings with just the sharp pastel from the box? Yeah, I, I like to use a new pastel for that. And the, the color doesn't matter? Are you, um, it does you, matter. I think the color does matter. I, I think, mean, depending on the painting, like you don't want it to get lost? or. Um, I usually use either uh, the blue spruce or I'll use a um, crimson um, new pastel. Um, I, I, I think, you know, signing is something that oftentimes gets kind of um, too much of an afterthought. You really, it's good to spend a little time in a consideration about how, how you're going to sign, um, I think. Merry Christmas. Hi. Hi, Roger. All right. I'm thinking, what do I want to do over here? I think I want to bring in... Something like this. We we had fun today, Roger. Oh, you have? We could do a video on signing. I don't think we need to do a whole workshop. That's for sure. No, we don't need to do a whole workshop. Yeah, we could do a little video. Sometime. We we definitely could do a little video. I think it would be good. Um, I think you know. The thing about a signature, a signature, it's not like it, it's, it's, it can definitely um, uh, detract. And, you know, you don't want that. And do you have a video that, where you set up your tray? Is there one on YouTube? There's a there's a mini lesson mini on lesson. how, you know, on how I did it. Or, or setting it up. You mean putting the colors in where I put them? Yeah. No, I don't have that. I should. We should do that. And uh, you do, uh, you do finish the pieces off camera a lot of times, correct? Um, well, today I might. I don't always, um, but uh, I don't a lot. But today I might because I feel like I'm going way over time on this. And I don't know how much people want to watch. I mean, I'll stay and, and do it. But I... Because I'm giving it away, I don't want to... I don't want to... Um, I don't want to rush it. Let's see. Um,
Oh, that's pretty fun. Okay. Um, this feels like a little bit, a little bit dark. Mix in this kind of green. That's pretty. And um, really quick, Marla, where do you buy your blue spruce? Do you order those online? I do. I get it from Dakota. Dakota Pastels. They have yeah. a lot of stuff there. But, you know, because I, um, because you guys get um, on, a, on a, a buying thing, sometimes, sometimes they don't, you know, you have to order it. I mean, they might not, they might be out. Like sometimes, sometimes I, I'll say something and everybody goes and buys. Like the watercolor workshop, you couldn't get the, those pentallic um, sketchbooks for anything after a little bit. This is actually my question. Do you, ha do you have a, uh, when you say, let's pretend you ran out of blue spruce, what would you use? Oh. In absentia there or oh, under a That's a really good question, huh? Um, I would go do an acrylic. <laughs> oh, you, 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 you depend I'd, on the blue I'd, spruce that much, huh? I, I sort of do. I, I don't know. Okay, I want to, there's a couple other little things I want to do. I, it's turning out pretty nice. Um. It's not exactly like the photo. Um, I wish there, I wish there was something different about the that. Let me, let me just. I'm gonna just try a couple things back here. better. I like that. And here's another question. Yeah. Um, do you offer any drawing classes? We're working on a drawing workshop for next year um, and I'm really excited about it. It's really important. I think that um, sometimes painters um, not ignore it but it's kind of can be a sticking point and you don't want that. I think you know at least for myself I want to be able to paint anything. I want to not have an Achilles heel something that stops me from being able to tackle something. And I think um, drawing is one of those, you know, things that people get kind of caught up with. If you don't have the drawing skill to do a certain thing. So I don't want that to be something that stops you. So drawing's important. Like for still life, you know, just something simple like ellipses can be, you know, really tricky and um, can be uh, what keeps you from <laughs> like, oh, I want to do the still life, but I'm not very good at ellipses. So um, we're going to tackle that.
right, I'm going to start pulling this together. And there's a couple little things I want to do back here. That's nice. Is Susan still watching? <laughs> She's getting this piece. Let's see. Let's put some um, a mat, the mat on it. So we have a technical question mm -hmm. um, about uh, I designed new pastels from Ebhard Faber. Um, are they the same as Prismacolor? I saw this here in Germany. We might not know the answer to that question. What's that? Uh, it's kind of a question about the, the brand called I Design New Pastel from Ebhard Faber. Are they the same as Prismacolor? I saw this here in Germany. Somebody offered it. Um, yeah, we. Part in the USA. That's not really our wheelhouse. I don't know products, yet. Naming and whatnot. Just, I say buy it, give it a try, and see yeah. what you like, you know. Yeah. All right, I'm just working on getting a little. And also, um, you don't have, like, you don't have to paint along with the demo, uh, but do you feel like it's, um, how, how beneficial do you feel like it is to paint along with the live demo? You know, I think that there's some de definite, you know, benefit of, of painting along with the live demo. Um, I think that you could probably just get, you know, you, if you want to paint along, it, you, it, it might be, wise to not paint along in real time, but paint along, you know, watch me do it and then do it, paint along, but after the fact, because if you watch me, then, you know, maybe you might pick up a couple things um, that I'm, you might be able to pay attention to what I'm doing a little bit more than if you were actually painting along in real time. Now, Painting along in real time or some variation of that, I feel like it um, is beneficial for people that, you know, copying anyone that you've, whose work you admire, and, and I'm assuming that that's the case, you know, if you're here, um, you're, you're hopefully going to be doing it differently than you normally would do. If, if you're painting along with me, more than likely you're going to have to speed up because I'm pretty fast. Right, and speeding up, I think there, there's a lot of benefit to speeding up. Um, it doesn't mean that you're just stabbing away at it and going quickly for quick sake, but when you speed up, you're going to have to make probably marks differently than, than, I'm, than you typically make, and I think that that's usually good for people. Speeding up also usually to me is good for people because when you're speeding up, you, you're not um, you're not second guessing your mark. You can't. You got to like put it down and leave it be. And I think one of the things that with painting is there's way, 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 way too much thinking and not enough painting and not enough responding. Like I hear it in sometimes even in your questions, you guys, that you know you're over overthinking it. And um, there's something to be said about thinking things through. I'm not suggesting that you don't think. 
I'm just suggesting that the painting is messy. It's not. It's it's a it's a it's a swimming together of all the theory and um, ideas about composition and color with one's own personal e emotional expressive response and one's own aesthetic and um, all of that and to give a uh, precedence to um, to the theory and the, the you know the the foundation is maybe not right so you want to i'm not saying not have that cuz i obviously i believe in that but you i would not give too too much to it so speeding up forces you <laughs> to get out of your head a little bit and into some other mode, you know, and that's what I think it, it can serve you. If that, does that make sense? That was a long answer. Okay, let me, I want to take a look at this with the frame around it. Yeah, I think that that turned out pretty nice today. So I think that's that's it. I want to take a quick look at your um, pastels that you used. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's fairly limited palette today, so that's good. Well, I'll just uh, yeah. kind of messy. Mm -hmm. This one I did not use. Uh, Pretty limited palette, huh? Well, it's not like crazy. It's not crazy out there. Okay. Some of this red. And I guess I'll spine it. Um. go. All right. I think that was fun. Okay. So next week will be, um, yeah, next week we'll <laughs> bring my back to you guys. Next week we'll be back and we're going to do two live streams next week, two um, times and such to be determined. I'm not sure what I'm going to paint, but we'll be having lots more giveaways, which is really exciting. And so I think, I think we're doing two live streams next week. And one thing I did want to mention that I kind of forgot to mention earlier is um, our our um, Black Friday sale has ended, but we've decided to let the in, um, initial sale price of Color College continue for a little bit because people are really wanting that. So um, that's still uh, at its introductory price. So that's still available. But okay, you guys, have a very, very, very Merry Christmas. Um, I will, we won't be doing a live stream again this week. We'll just um, enjoy your holiday and um, be safe and healthy and all of that. And um, we'll see you, see you next week. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Merry Christmas.